Let's look at the following example in which we're going to apply the ideal gas law to calculate the pressure of a system. So let's begin. So if 100 liters of oxygen at 25 degrees Celsius and an absolute pressure of 3 atmospheres is compressed to a new volume of 60 liters and there is an increase in temperature to 60 degrees Celsius, calculate the new pressure of our system. So let's begin by looking at our two diagrams. So we have system number two that is at 25 degrees Celsius is compressed from 100 liters to 60 liters and there is an increase in temperature that increases to 60 degrees Celsius. So, what is the new pressure of our system? Well, the pressure has to increase, but what exactly is the value? To calculate the value, we have to apply the ideal gas law. But first, we have to realize the following important point. Notice the number of gas molecules inside our system remains constant. The number of gas molecules in system number one is equal to the number of gas molecules in system number two. And that means the number of moles given by N remains constant during our compression. So let's actually apply our ideal gas law which states that the product of the pressure and the volume is equal to the product of the number of moles, our, ga our gas constant and the temperature given in Kelvin. So, notice that we just said N remains constant and R, the gas constant, is also a constant. So the product of a constant and a constant is also a constant. So the product of N and R is a constant. So let's take this equation and let's bring all the variables from the right side to the left side of our equation. So we have P times V divided by T is equal to N times R. And this is equal to a constant. So that basically means that the ratio of PV divided by T of system 1 is equal to PV divided by T of system number 2. And that is described by the following equation. So P1V1 divided by T1 is equal to P2V2 divided by T2, where this this number simply represents the number of the system. So 1 is system number 1 and 2 is system number 2. So what we want to solve for is the P2. So we essentially want to rearrange this equation and solve for P2. So we bring T2 to the left and V2 to the right or to the left and we get the following result. P2 is equal to P1 V1 T2 divided by V2 multiplied by T1. So we want to determine all these values, then plug them into our calculator and find what P2 is. So P2 is equal to, we have pressure 1, which is 3 atms, we have volume 1, which is 100 liters, and we have the temperature of system number 2 given in kelvins. So 273 plus 60 gives us the kelvins. Now we divide that by volume 2, which is 60 liters multiplied by T1, which is 25 degrees Celsius plus 273. We plug that into our calculator and we get that the new pressure of system number 2 when our compression takes place is about 5.6 atmospheric pressures.